Oh, it's 10 o'clock <laughs> this morning. I didn't even sleep in, but man, it's gone. I think it's because I am balancing several things here. My retreat, my three-day <laughs> retreat that started 20 years ago, and of course we had to miss last year's, um, is starting this Thursday. Oh, but wait, there's 23 people, no, 20 one people coming starting today. Adair goes, whoa, when did it turn into this? And I'm like, going, I know, we just love to sew. Um, unfortunately, our teacher can't come. Um, her husband is in the hospital with staff. So it's uh, Susan Cleveland. They will take all the prayers and hugs from across the world right now. So it's okay. We're fine. We'll be fine. We'll miss you. We'll get you to later date, Susan. So while we wait for people to log on, um, this, what the heck just, here we go. So uh, I always try and start with a little story. I have two grandkids in town here and one is Lennox and she's the oldest. She's five, about to turn six any day now. And um, she's one of those kids and there's always one in the Christmas Christmas play that she's up on stage with all her little friends from school. They've been practicing, you know, all December, November, and she'll get up there and you just, oh, there she goes, there she goes, and she'll start crying. I mean, I mean, just hysterical. So her daddy always gets her off the stage and brings her down. I'm sure some of you have seen the YouTube or the Thing that went around the internet a while back where the daddy gets on stage with the kid and performs. Well, Jerry just gets her off. So um, I dare make sure the kids have all sorts of different experiences. And one of the things that um, Lennox has done is cheer, cheer, cheerleading. And, and so at the Dublin high school game, football game on Friday. Oh, I forgot to say it's Monday, September 27th. Okay. So last Friday, uh, they, they'll, the cheerleaders do their thing. And then in the third to fourth quarter, I think that's the right sport for football. Um, they let the little local kids get up and cheer with them of which, oh, Lennox was one of them, but here's the caveat, a dare can't go. And that's what hinks her up. So we got all this video and there she is on the box, on the box. And the next day I said, Lennox, how did you end up on the box? I mean, I can't even believe she'd be up there doing her thing anyways. And she said, I just got on it. And people, isn't that life? When there's a box, just get on it. <laughs> so that made me very happy to see that she got on the box. <laughs> So I wanted to show you um, this. The Lisa Ellis uh, show just uh, uploaded or dropped or whatever you want to say this weekend. And she does these things with cathedral windows. Guys, I have never been a cathedral window fan, but I am now after seeing what she does with it and how easy it is to the point that Julie, uh-oh, oh no, oh no. Oh no, Julie, Julie sent me a picture of what she did. Where are you? I didn't upload it. <gasps> I'm sorry, Julie. Um, no, not Julie. Oh shoot. I, you know what? I did this this morning and I, I can't do that. I have to do it the day before. Forgive me. Anyway, she sh showed me a little sample and she said she loved it. It was super easy. So at a minimum, I would go take a look at the show because she takes it to a whole nother level. Again, it's Lisa Ellis. The other thing I wanted to share, the um, cart's getting in front of the, the horse. I got a present. I got a present from Arda. And she got hold of me and she said, would you like some leftover Thai silk stuff? <laughs> yes, straight up. Don't have to ask me. And I got this box yesterday and I just, it's kind of blown out here with the camera. I just almost wept. It was so beautiful. So I dug through and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Some of it's from Talbot's. In the olden days, you could go to Talbot's down in Carmel and they, you could buy these scraps like this, but there was one piece in here. Where did you go? 
that I decided was my favorite piece. Where are you, little piece? And the reason it's my favorite piece is because it's kind of an oddball, meaning an oddball color. Well, where did you go? Here it is. This is such an odd color for a quilt. And given that, you put ones in like this and this, and compared to the other fabrics and stuff, these are just like, they're the things that are going to make it from ordinary to extraordinary. So Arda, I, I just can't even, um, I, I decided not to, I wrote you a thank you and I decided not to put it in with my other ones yet. And then um, she also gave me, now this is just so unbelievable, um, a hunk of Dupiani silk that was from her, um, grandchild's talent and what that is for her bat mitzvah and what that is is they wrap kind of um it's a symbolic prayer prayer flag for lack of better words that you wrap around yourself in say things like your bar mitzvah bat mitzvah uh, joey and shelly had one when they got married and so this piece is extraordinary and normally I would put it in with my other normal dupes, but I'm not going to because I think that's just an extraordinary gift that you sent my way. So I want to thank you so, so much for that. All right. Okay. So I know. What am I going to do with these silks? Who knows? Who knows? They just, it took my breath. It just took my breath away. Okay. So then Julie sent me her sequoia. Uh, she said, better late than never. I think this one is just absolutely spectacular. And either you love horses or you're of Scandinavian descent. I haven't decided yet. You know, it's funny when, when we were making that quilt, I'm like, going, oh, it's an okay quilt. No, it's a, it's a darn good quilt, if you ask me. And again, people, if you go way back, uh, we got all the patterns from a little block book that we sell in the store and the lessons are all there. Okay, that was my daughter. She probably quickly hung up. <laughs> okay, so then we have, oh, there's the one. Okay, I got them out of order. I'm so sorry. There's the one we were talking about that um, Pam did. She just whipped that out after watching the show. Okay, then we have Missy here. Missy wanted to know how I would quilt this, and she asked, would I stipple it? or what? Missy, I am not a stippler person. I just, I think we can do better than that. If, if you just have to go over the whole thing, you could do a crosshatch, but you're not going to want to hear what I have to say, Missy. I would crosshatch the back and then somehow make the flowers come to life and then do something fun within the context of the cup and within the heart. And yes, it's a pain in the you know what. And then, and then with the border, if I did crosshatch, on the beige part in the border, I would do something that's curvy, like a cable or clamshells or something like that. Okay, then Kathy, okay, we're gonna be doing the pineapple today. And yes, it's cut really close to the book the, uh, what's it called? The center of the book. So yeah, you can get a little distortion. Um, so she actually takes the book apart and then puts it in fabric and those protectors. Also somebody else shared with me and I didn't even realize this. And now that I have new glasses and I can see these books are, are actually sewn together and you can go to the center and clip the sewing part and then the pages all fall apart. But if you do take the book apart, if you deconstruct it, make sure you do something that you put it back into a good place, like how uh, Kathy did, so that everything doesn't get all lost and messed up. Okay, then we have here Irene from Green Bay, <laughs> who wrote me and said, Dork County's a peninsula, it's not an island. And her husband says, well, no, technically it's an island. And I wrote back and I said, no, I think we're both right. <laughs> but anyways, check this out. I have notes on it. It has over 6,000 pieces. 6,000 pieces, people, this lovely little pineapple. Oh, how can that be? Because they're four inch blocks. Whoosh, right? Man. Okay, then Betsy sent this foundation paper piecing um, 
quilt. It's beautiful. You know, one of the most requested quilts from Simply Quilts was the thing that sl slid across the, the front. And I think it's called a twisted log cabin at the opening of the show. People loved that. Log cabins with a twist. I believe that was the book. So they, I kind of, this kind of reminds me of that. Okay. And then we have Wendy. Oh, look at her. She finished. Very good. Wendy, I, I have an inkling you've done this before. <laughs> it's beautiful in the neutrals. Just beautiful. Okay, and then this is Gail's, and this is, she's practiced on this one. And so we're going to talk about it now. And I, I wrote her, I said, this would be beautiful, period, um, as a quilt by itself. So... Let me talk about the pattern in the book before we get too far ahead of ourselves here. Here it is right here. I'm going to turn it sideways. You can see, ah, where, where the heck? Why is this? I drew the one inch square there, okay? Somebody asked on the PDF, does it come with the one inch square? No, the PDF is simply um, the same as the book. The other thing is note that there isn't the little quarter inch line that will be the trimming line in the end because there simply wasn't room to make this an eight inch block on the quilt. So don't trim it to here when you're done or you'll be making another block, all right? Make sure that when you trim it, you add yourself your, your quarter inch, all right? So here is my block, oh, from the original quilt in the book. It, again, it's a stunning, stunning quilt that almost took me out when I had to make it just because I was not set up properly. I realize now, and now I've got a really great setup that I've shared and I will also be sharing again today so that it's not so laborious. Let's see here. All right. So the first thing I would do if I were working with the, pat, the, the kit that you, perhaps you purchased and or working with your own fabrics, I would like you for the pineapple to sort the fabrics in a light pile and in a dark pile. All right. So I will show you what I did. I did that and I went, okay, the lights are on top. The darks are on the bottom. And then I thought, you know what, just for insurance, I'm going to snap a picture of that and make it in black and white. You can see there on the top, there are those three fabrics that reflect dark. Let's go back and look at what those are again. We got the polka dot to the left, then you move right. Oh, go away. Okay, so it's that, if we go to the middle polka dot, white with the purple blue on top, it's the fabrics to the right, the three fabrics. Let's look again. So I took them out and I put them in the bottom row and I re-snapped. So if you're ever wondering how your value is going, and there's some in there, by the way, that could swing in both directions, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But if you ever wondered if it's good value or not, all you have to do is take a picture on your smartphone and then take it to black and white. And that will show you. Honestly, I was shocked. I was shocked because I consider myself a pretty darn good value girl. Okay, so let's take a look at the pattern. There we go. Oh wait, no, I'm gonna go back to fabric. So here are, what I want you to do is for the strips, let me move this back here so I can get more on here. For the strips, you're going to, let me open the book so I don't tell you to cut the wrong thing. You can see here I've got my lights and I've got my darks, right? You see them? Now what's interesting is that um, these guys could play in either this camp or that camp. Or I could maybe say, okay, you can go there and you can go there. I think that's good. But hey, what about this guy? What about our cave right here? Well, it depends where you cut up on the strip. If it were this, 
I could say, you can go there. If it were this, I could say, you can go there. And that's the issue when you have a, um, actually that still looks pretty light, but when you have a fabric that's a focus fabric, it swings in both directions, okay? So you're gonna wanna cut a one, I'm a, one and a half inch strip of your lights and a one and a half inch strip of your darks, okay? And then just set them aside, put them in a pile. I mean, I, don't, I have limited space here, so let me get this out of the way. There's my lights, there's my darks, and there's this. So that goes bye-bye. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut a one and three quarter for the center. All right. And in this case, I chose a dark. And where did you go? There you go. I, I assigned this to the dark pile. So the first, I want to look carefully at this. Basically, what's going on is if you start with a dark center, the next round is light, the next round is dark, the next round is light, and so forth. All right, so if you start with dark in the center, you're gonna go to light, to all four corners. So here is my little pattern. I am, where did you go, little square? Huh, there, there you go, okay. What you're going to do is you're going to put it on the back side of your pattern and pin it. Oh wait, one of you said, can't I glue stick it? The answer is yes, why didn't I think of that? Just with just a little bit of glue stick, this is a water-soluble Quilter Select glue stick that comes, starts yellow and dries clear very, very quickly. You don't want to put like all over the place like that, just a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it over and I can see I'm fairly well centered on it. That's the beauty of vellum. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little, a four little lights. And I'm going to do this randomly. I don't care. I'm not going to lose sleep out of it. If your fabrics have been coordinated together, you're going to be just fine. It's the randomness of this that is so much fun. All right. Get up there. I'm so excited for my retreat. I haven't seen these ladies in two years. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it like right here right there with my Karen K. Buckley scissors that I absolutely love. Now the first round is gonna be a little laborious and this is why. I'm gonna put this here, you know, it's just like a 16th or an eighth bigger than this. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here. I'm gonna glue it on and I, I don't wanna glue this side, I'm afraid they could get caught up together. So this one's gonna take a little bit. So I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine. Here we go. Three cameras today, it's jazzy. Here we are, I'm gonna turn it over, all right? And I'm going to sew one right there, right there on through the paper. And I have tightened up my stitch. Remember we spoke about that. What's up, John? Uh-huh. Oh, it is there. Cool. Okay, on the PDF download, it is there. I did not know this. Okay, remember, I'm going to overstitch a little bit. Now, here's the deal. I did not have a thread cutter when I um, did the first one. I did not have it. And I will tell you, that's almost a game changer. Because before, there were just thread ends everywhere and this and that. So now what I'm going to have, so I went a little bit more, a little bit back, and now I'm going to have to go back over to my ironing surface, which now I've got to adjust this camera. I'm telling you people. And then I'm going to iron this. All right. And let me see if we can just dial it in a little bit better. Maybe I can get, bring it down lower. Close your eyes so we don't get seasick. Okay. Oh, 
Hey, if you haven't seen your newsletter today, we have the best of show of Houston by, uh, sh 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 I'm going to say it wrong, Sashiko Chiba, um, and it's called Rondo. I slaughtered your name. I am so sorry. Um, but hey, Quilt Sync got it out early and I love him for that. So yay, and oh my gosh, it is just absolutely beautiful. Now where'd my glue go? Oh, people, here we go. Then I'm gonna do it on this side. I'm gonna put down this one, line it up. It gets better after you get through the first round. Come over to my sewing machine. And this is the side I'm gonna do right here. Again, tighten up your stitch, 2.0. Let's just say, thread cutter, and then the angels sang. <laughs> it's funny because all these little doodads that were, you know, every machine you get has better doodads. <laughs> so, there we go. And I got to do two more. Boy, it's like that's not turned on. Here. Uh-oh, I've got the salvage in here. Hmm, I don't care. Now, no. Yeah, I really do care. I don't want the salvage in there. That's jerky of me. Okay. Put that there. Again, don't put too much on. I can't, and I'm going to line it up to the green right there. And see, I can't do it over here because I would catch it in that. It's just the first round that is so stinking laborious. Right? Hey, um, we're going to Austin, Texas to be taping in a couple weeks. Not a, It's on location, not with an audience and all that. But if any of you are in the Austin Guild, we are seeking three or four quilt racks to borrow. So if you know anybody, please let me let John know. This is his bit, but I thought all of a sudden, wait a minute, I could help him out. Okay, and then one more. I also think the reason I'm having a funner time foundation paper piecing now is that I've got my setup on the side here, which is that TV wooden tray that I cut down low. And so I wasn't having to get up and down and up and down and up and down. Okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't turn on that camera. All right. But that's not the important part right now. So here we go. Man, can you guys believe what's going on out in the oceans with all the tankers and all that? Oh, my goodness. It's so weird to have that you can't get things. I mean, it's just crazy. All right, so now I have to trim. So what I'm going to do, I've got to get these angles like that. All right? So I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to go from center to two. I'm going to fold it back, and you're going to see that I'm having to break threads just a little bit. And then I'm going to put my little add a quarter on it. If I didn't have the add a quarter, I'm telling you right now, I would be goofing it up. I guarantee it. Work my way around. Here we go. I One thing I love about the pineapple block is that while they say color gets the credit, Value does the work, and that is the truth. One more. There we go. So let's see what we've got going on here. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my dark pile, which is over there. And I'm going to choose this one. You can see how well thought out I am. This one, we don't want that salvage. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'll do that one because I've just done it. 
this one. Again, I'm going to darks now. And maybe the shiny one. The shiny one is an absolute perfect example of why you would want a foundation paper piece because it's such a squirrely fabric. All right, so now this is the trick. You don't have to, and especially as it gets bigger, you don't have to take this all the way to here. You don't have all the way to here. Well, in this case, you kind of do, but um, basically you just want to make sure that as you progress, the, the fabric that is the next layer makes it about a quarter of an inch past that. And again, in this case, that's the thing, but as you get into bigger ones, and I'll show you that in a moment because I pre-did one, you don't have to do that. Now, the other really great news is that you can do two sides at once now because the flop over doesn't interfere with what's coming on this side. This is so scientific. All right, let's go so. I will turn it the correct button on. So where did I do it? I did it here. Did I? Yeah, I did. See, even we trained professionals question ourselves. Make sure you don't cut that tip off of that square. It's the beauty of foundation paper piecing. The glue stick comes from thequiltshow.com. It's Quilter Select. That didn't, I didn't cut it. It's called Quilter Select. It comes with one glue stick and one refill. But if you go to get it, I would get the original packaging and then get an extra package of refills. It dries really fast, so you have to be very aware of not leaving the cap off. That's, that's the trick to the whole thing. All right. So now we go like this, now we go like this. Oh, these are going to be so beautiful. I can't hardly stand it. Okay, here we go. So now see this, I was talking too soon. This next piece does not have to go all the way out to here. Got it? So it just has to go a little bit bigger than this line. This line. My technical terms, line it up to that. Yeah, I was kind of surprised a moment ago. I thought, wait a minute. But I'm thinking on the fly here, thinking on the fly. Okay, let's see this, these, this goes outside that. All right, and now I'm gonna sew this one. Cut. I love that stupid cutter. <laughs> It's not stupid at all. <laughs> hey, I sent out a couple of Bernina coupons this weekend. Yay! All right. To so this. This. And like this. Okay, you can see a little bit of glue goobered here. It will wash out and it will dry clear, so don't get shook up over that. I'm going to turn it over. And then I'm going to trim again. I'm going to trim one, two, three. There we go. Where'd my adder ruler go? I know this doesn't happen to any of you. I just know it. Ah! Okay. How can that be? How could it have gotten anywhere? How? Hmm. Huh. Well... Here we go, without it. Oh, there it is. I mean, does that, that's, that happens to you too, right? It's ridiculous. And then I work my way around. And so forth. I'll be done with this in a second. I'm not gonna make the whole block, don't freak out. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Okay. And one more. I think my friend Meryl might be getting a seven, a mid seven hundred range. 
machine this weekend I'm at my retreat. I'm very excited. Okay, there you go. And so if this is dark, what do we do next? Light. And so it goes all the way around. I started making this one yesterday. And so there we have light. So if we have light, then we go dark. Let me grab another dark one. And I just want to reiterate that when I cut for the dark, the number four, I don't have to take it all the way to the edge. I just have to take it so that it's just like maybe three eighths outside this diagonal line and you'll be just fine. So what do you think? What do you think? Huh? You're going to need two. And um, okay. The hardest part for me was making sure I trimmed on the correct line. Finally, about halfway through, the light bulb came on to trim under the next number that I would be adding on. Thank you. I didn't know how to say it. You just said it, Gail. Thank you. And remember this, you guys. Do not trim to the, ed to the edge of the dark line. You've got to put your own quarter inch on it. Please don't do that because then you will really be super unhappy. And it's simply because it didn't, it could have fit without going into the gutter of the book. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see. I love, so for me, the big deal with paper piecing was number one, turning your brain around. Okay. I mean, that's huge. It's just everything so counterintuitive. But number two, your setup. The fact that I am in a swivel chair and I can turn to my side here and just iron is huge. All right. And I was using my little Oliso iron, um, last week and this week I went back to my Panasonic only be my cordless only because I've got so many cords going on here it's just it's a it's unbelievable what's going on here and lest I don't want to cut through a cord or something that would wouldn't be good okay so okay only cut one side off of the four square in a square yeah oh <laughs> Marie <laughs> so this is what's going to happen. As soon as we hang up here, I'm going to do a little taping with Alilo. A bunch of you are asking about lighting, all right? And um, we're going to start with the big lighting, and she's going to take it down to the, the most simplest lighting. So I know some of you, I have a friend that just moved to Rochester, and I know she's got to think about lighting in her basement, and this is what she's going to want to do. And But then, like, what about things like at a workshop or this or that, whatever? So I'm going to take that with Lilo, and then I'm going to head over to retreat. I will show you that on Wednesday, and if you have any questions and stuff, that's just great. Friday, I will be at retreat. Next Monday, um, I'm going to skip order in the book. We're going to do the basket. I just thought, you know what? I don't even know why it wasn't put like that in the book. So we're going to do the scrappy basket next Monday. All right. So what do we have here? Um, Okay, so um, Marie is waiting for the 790 Crystal Edition. You know, it's so stupid. <laughs> I love that you got the Crystal Edition. <laughs> it was the rose gold for me. <laughs> I just had to have it. it. I just love this machine. But also, I sat at a Jenny Lyons workshop at Craft Napa. Oh, okay, Craft Napa. Uh, Jenny Lyons Craft Napa. And I worked on this puppy for a whole day. And I'm going, baby, you're coming home with mama. All right, Craft Napa, Pokies, uh, it's always in mid-January, my birthday. Um, the classes are going to be smaller this round. And uh, this Thursday, mind you, today's Monday, September 27th, she will be opening online registration for in-person. There's only going to be 15 people to a class, so it'll be like my retreat where we have really you know, stretched out. But also, if you can't, if you are, can't come and do it on purpose, in person and or would prefer to do it virtually she's going to have one in person and then one virtually and i think that sign up thing is coming up in the beginning of october but in, in the meantime i would go uh search craft napa and see what's going on i'm taking joanne sharp two times and then i'm taking libby williamson one time I love everything about it. So, would French general work? 
for fabric or uh, fabric for this, Mary. I'm assuming that's what you're saying. Oh yeah, any this is such a this as long as you've got lights and you've got darks, you are good to go. You, you are good to go. Remember, color gets the credit, value does the work, especially in something like this. So. We are going to, okay, what about uh, magnifying lighting also, more portable type? Um, you know what, Sandy? I will ask Lilo that. Um, I'm going to write it down because I will forget it. Portable lighting. Um, portable and magnifying. I will tell you this right now. I got new, my new glasses, and John's coming in here. i got to get off. Um, and I can see again. So if you're having a hard time, first make sure your eyes are okay, because mine were not. So. I'm asking about the DOM on Friday. Are you Friday or is DOM Friday? Is it the first? Yeah. We'll see. What is Friday? Is Friday the first? Yeah, that's William's birthday. Yeah, so that's the first. So usually okay, be... well, as far as I know, Barbara will be doing something, okay? I can confirm on we'll Friday. Confirm. We'll, we'll confirm and tell you, but my guess is yes, if Friday is the first, and I believe it is, so. Okie doke, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, my favorite piece by Alex Anderson. Well, Barb, thank you for asking that, Carol, by the way. I love a Bernina with a bigger throat, 16 inch, not so many stitches, more basic, and headspace for quilting, and have the machine for quilting and garment making, <laughs> oh, Joan. <laughs> I'm sure Jeannie's watching this. Okay. How many different strips did I cut? You know what? Um, I just took an uh, inch and a half off each one. And I don't know, there's 24 pieces or something like that. I'll probably have to go cut more lights. But I mean, just start with one strip off of each of your colors. And then if you have to go cut off a couple more, that's fine. I'm a, I'm a loosey-goosey quilter. All right. And speaking of that, this goose has to get out of here. Have a great day.